You've had a baby. Congratulations. You've watched your baby grow and grow, and now he has reached the tender age of five or six when the government takes over. A government employee will now remove your child from your home. You are no longer needed for the moral or intellectual instruction of your child. He will be placed in a government institution run by government unions and overpaid bureaucrats. To pay for this institution, the government forcibly extracts your money. Lots and lots, more and more. What does your child learn in this government institution? He learns all about homosexuality, tolerance, diversity, how government is great and America is bad. Does he learn about math, English, history, economics? Not really. Test scores in essential subjects are down and falling. Ignorance of economics, history, and other important life skills are up and growing. We have high school graduates who can't read their diplomas, while students in Asia and Europe are excelling. So why do we continue to support these government institutions we mistakenly call public schools? One of the ten most important objectives that need to be achieved in a communist society is free education for all children in public schools. Why? Simple. If you put your child in a religious school, you expect them to come out religious. By forcing all children into government schools, the government grows an army of government automatons who see government as the greatest good. They learn to be happy in their ignorance and mediocrity. They have their choice of Coke or Pepsi. They get a government check to pay for it. They have 1,000 channels of entertainment and no knowledge of life. The Roman emperors called this keeping the masses occupied with bread and circuses, so they could keep the mobs content in their slavery. Why should we put up with this? Why do we? The education of our children and bringing them up to be intelligent, prosperous, freedom-loving citizens, and we entrust this task to government that is screwed up, just about everything it has tried to do? You decided to have children. The responsibility for raising and educating them is yours, not your neighbors. Education should begin at home. Anyone can homeschool today if they have the will and the desire. And parents can cooperate with their neighbors in this effort and share teaching responsibilities. Children can be sent to private schools, with which they agree morally, philosophically, and religiously, and which have historically, along with homeschoolers, done a much better job and at a much lower cost than government schools. But how can we afford to stay home and teach our children or send them to private school? If we add up all the taxes we pay to the federal, state, and local government for education and allowed individuals to keep all that money, there would be plenty for most people to educate their children. And the people who don't have children or whose children are grown would have lots of money to donate to private schools for scholarships or help out their neighbors' homeschooling efforts. Educating the next generation is crucial for a healthy, prosperous, and free society, and it is in everyone's interest to ensure children are educated. Businesses want intelligent workers for their industries. Communities want well-adjusted, moral, and involved citizens. It is in society's interest to see that children are educated. Therefore, the majority of individuals in a society will see it as in their interest and voluntarily and cheerfully contribute to that end. But it all comes down to the fact that you chose to have a child, and that child is your responsibility, first and foremost. It is in society's interest to see that that child is educated, intellectually and morally, so the next generation can grow up to be intelligent and free. Such a crucial activity should not be subject to the force of government intervention. It is time we return the privilege and responsibility of raising and educating our children to its proper agent, you.